Good afternoon. This is Professor Amanal Dean with Muslim Network TV and the program Critical Talk. It is getting warmer out there, guys, here in Chicago. So I think we should thank Allah for the mercy because I hear we're having snow come again. Today, I wanted to focus on the American Islamic College, mostly because I've been some way or the other affiliated or associated since its inception with Ismail, Ismail al Faruqi. Uh, the college, as all good places do, goes through strategic planning, reinventing itself, all kinds of goody. And today I have with me its newest president, Timothy Giannotti, who is currently serving as the president, as well as the founder and principal teacher of the Islamic Institute for Spiritual Formation in Toronto. Leave it to Timothy to have more than one hat. He is a scholar of classical Islamic theology, philosophy, and spirituality. He is also a theologian, pastor leader, pastoral leader, and committed interfaith advocate with hands-on experiencing promoting an interfaith engagement around the globe. With more than 20 years of university level teaching experience in the US and Canada. He has served as the vice president for academic affairs and the provost at the same Islamic college in a different iteration, that's important. An associate professor of Islamic studies at the University of Waterloo in Canada. Let me give my salams and welcome Professor Giannotti. Thank you, wa alaikum assalam long-term buddy. Yeah, it's so good to see you. It is. Um, I want to get a, a little bit more into your background because I think that today, you know, it's it's almost like I'm, I'm talking to a, an old spirit here. When we did Islamic studies, it was classical Islamic studies. Mm -hmm. Now it's a little bit of everything that you can throw in but the kitchen sink. So how do we move, not move, extend classical Islamic learning to the modern day? Do you just add courses? Do you change the way you're teaching the same things? What do you do? No, it's a, it's a great question. And it's a question that, that uh, I think echoes the the similar questions when we're just talking about religious studies uh, in general. Right. You know, there, there is no discipline in, in religious studies. Um, and so, uh, so there's room in religious studies for historians, for anthropologists, mm -hmm. for philologically and textually trained scholars like, like we were. Um, in, so th there's room and, and there's, there's room for uh, a multiplicity of perspectives and a multiplicity of methodologies. Right. And I think when we're studying something uh, as as oceanic as Islam or any of the great religious yeah. traditions, yeah. we all I think we all have to do so with the epistemological humility that our part of it is just a small part. Now, now the the part that we did right, the classical Arabic and the philological training and the classical textual tradition has long seen itself as being kind of the uh, the uh, the archetypal, you know, Islamic studies uh, approach, but uh, but I, I think that that we've uh, we've grown to understand that uh, that when we're talking about lived Islam and Islam as a as a as a real lived reality, which includes aspects of civilization and culture and language and assumptions about gender and all kinds of other things. Uh, I, I think we we realize that it's not always about the texts. Right. It's not always, and it's just not, and and it's not always about linguistic expertise. And so one of the one of the exciting things about collecting uh, Islamic studies scholars here at AIC and other other places, but one of the exciting things is that we we learn to uh, we grow by being connected to other people and other methodologies and other approaches, other time periods. 
mm. and um, and and other questions. And so, so I uh, I have to admit that I uh, I I think that initially I begrudgingly allowed space. Uh, you and me, right? Yeah, for these other for these other approaches, but but then I realized that hey man, it's it's not up to me, right? It's right. it's not my call. Right. And, and all of these approaches are every bit as legitimate as my own. Right. So, so uh, it's it's it, what it means is that it's it's turned us all back into graduate students again, and so we're all learning again, and we're all humbled by all of the, all of the things that we don't know, and uh, and so I I uh, have less and less time these days to do to do uh, the kinds of scholarship that I, I was trained to do. But I, uh, I, I really am in awe now of all of these people who, uh, who are coming to the question of Islam and Muslims in, in ways that I never could have imagined before. That's very true. And I was with you with the, I begrudgingly gave up too, because I couldn't figure out, if you don't know anything about the basics, how are you going to just add willy nilly this and that and the other on? And I think that I was not giving credit for some thoroughness and some appreciation. And then I felt sorry for him. I said, well, now you know two things. You know what you're trained in and then a little bit about classical uh, studies. But at a, um, where you are, <clears throat> think deeply. <laughs> what do you want to see? How are you? You know, I see all this creeping uh, challenge on the field. You know, all of the Christian, um, well, not all, but many of the uh, Christian theological seminaries want to just kind of add on Islam. You know, like you, you do, I, I, I got my raincoat, but I'm going to get an umbrella too, right? Yeah. Uh, to get more students, to make more money. And then we have the American Islamic College. What is different about what is done there than say if I went to Catholic Theological Seminary? It's a great, great question. And and again, like, you know, CTU, Catholic Theological Union and CTS, um, you know, Chicago Theological Seminary, LSTC, all mm -hmm. of these, you know, all of these McCormick, all, all of these um, Chicago theological schools are, you know, are doing wonderful work in, in, in their own right. And I commend them for integrating Islamic studies scholars in their midst. And, uh, and in the case of CTS, CTS is now working with a, a very uh, close and I think wonderful articulation uh, agreement with, with Bayan so that they're, that they're able to access you know a lot of wonderful scholarly perspectives and and offer courses that uh, that uh, hitherto they they would not have been able to to offer. But I think when when we come to the the project of the American Islamic College, th there are a couple of things at play here. Um, one is that we are at heart, even though we're all doing online courses these days, but at heart we are a residential academic community, which means that that we, uh, we refuse to give up the idea of that transformational relationship between teacher and student, that transformational relationship between students and students and teachers and teachers. And so we, we, we really believe in that relational nature of education, which is, a, as you know, a very traditional Islamic value, very traditional Islamic understanding of education. Now that said, we are not mindlessly enslaved to the tradition. We we uh, we also speak about traditions here, and mm -hmm. so it's not it's not that we are championing one uh, interpretation of Islam or one one notion of orthodoxy. But we're we're here as an academic community to uh, to study everything and Islam and all of its all of its rich diversity and and its many traditions, which have unfolded in different places at different times and with different formative, uh, sometimes traumatizing experiences. And so, so what I understand us to be doing at AIC is something that is, I think, in a, in a revolutionary sense, mm -hmm. kind of uh, interdenominational, 
almost what we might even call ecumenical, as well as, as something much more than just a theological program. So of course, we, we do have our core flagship undergraduate program in Arabic and Islamic studies that integrates many of those different methodologies that we, we talked about you know, just before. And so some of the training is philological and in Arabic, some of, some of that training is in classical texts, but we also, you know, Dr. Shaban Amir is here, you know, as an anthropologist and studies, you know, Islam in America and Muslims in America. And so we, we have much more than just a, let's say a classical philological kind of uh, approach, let's say to Islamic studies. Um, and of course we, we have our masters of divinity, our masters of arts in Islamic theology and our masters of divinity program, which trains people for active employment as spiritual caregivers and religious leaders in the field. But our aspiration at AIC is much more than that. And not, not, to, not to belittle or to demean those core, uh, those core flagship programs. But I think what we, what we aspire to become is a full-fledged university that is here not just, not just for Muslim students or, and certainly not just for a particular kind or denomination or orientation of Muslim students but here for the, for the well-being and the, and the benefit of the entire society. And so what I'm envisioning now is a, is a full-fledged, fully accredited university that has Islam, that embraces Islam unambiguously and unapologetically at its core, but understands itself to be for the benefit of everyone, for the entire society. And so it won't be long before we have America's first undergraduate major in American Muslim studies. We know that there are many places where you can go and do American studies, but to, to have an undergraduate major in American Muslim studies would, would be, I think, such an incredible thing because we can look at the, the prominent roles, the formative roles Muslims have played in American music, American culture, American sport, American politics, uh, you know, uh, American literature. There, there are so many ways in which we can, we can understand um, the Muslim experience in America, past, present, and future. And so, you know, we're going to have a program for that. I look forward to the day when we'll be able to offer, possibly in tandem with, with other institutions, but we'll be able to offer maybe like a five-year Avicenna scholar program where you can do a, a BA in Arabic and Islamic studies and do all of your pre-medical sciences and go to medical school. And understanding that, that science and the humanities are only artificially separated because we are we've become so fragmented and so compartmentalized in our academic discourse. But to be in a place where the theologians can be talking to the scientists and the scientists can be raising theological questions, this to me is is uh, one of the ways in which we can we can really do things differently at AIC. And so as we begin to flower, as we begin to flower, I think that our distinctiveness is going to really be obvious to everyone. Okay, now you've had the softball questions. We're going to take a break. Okay. And I'm going to come back and hit you with some hardball ones. All right, I'm ready. Professor Amina al Dean with Muslim Network TV on Critical Talk with Professor Timothy Giannotti. We'll be right back. Our neighbors don't realize that Muslims are absolutely opposed to ISIS. Salam. My name is Abdul Malik Mujahid. I'm an Imam in Chicago. 16 shots! No me! No justice! No me! So how do we bring up the energy which uh, can really have an impact on the world? You need to build bridges of understanding among people, and we need to have America moving forward. That lesson learned has brought the strength of humanity to America, which is the diversity. Mujahid Talks, only on Muslim Network TV. Faithfully connected.
Welcome back. This is Professor Amina al -Din, and I'm talking with the president of American Islamic College, my good friend, Professor Timothy Giannotti. We're on Muslim Network TV. Those of you who don't know about the college can learn, and we can <clears throat> kind of interrogate its lofty aspirations. Mm. Now, one of the things that it is come to mind and in some previous shows is the fact that quickly courses on American Islam are turning into horrible courses about the African-American community and glorious courses about the South Asian and Arab community. How in anything that does American Muslim communities leave out the first people here? And the, Latino Americans. The, indigenous, the indigenous peoples of North America. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it's, a, it's a really important question. And, and I also think that our, you know, as, as we aspire to serve such a radically diverse community, we need to seek to reflect that in our hiring and in, in our teaching and even in our, in, even in our assessment. And so this is something that's, that's really interesting. So, you know, in, in the indigenous societies, in these indigenous communities, uh, story is so important. And, uh, and so the idea of doing theology through story, there, there's so much here for us to, to learn and to explore with the indigenous communities. And it would be wrong for us to, uh, to uh, I guess, to conceive of an expanding curriculum in a colonial spirit that has no conversation and no accountability to the indigenous traditions of North America. And, you know, I've, I've had the blessing, as you, you know me well, and so you know that I've, I've had the blessing of living half of my life north of the border in Canada, where indigenous- That's Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, where, well, you know, Canada has its, has its issues as well, but yeah. it is, I, I would call it a privilege to have been, uh, to have had those, those years, those decades in Canada and one of the one of the great learnings of those years has been the um, the increasing attention that is being paid to to land claims and to the indigenous communities wherever we are. And so th this is one of the ways I think that at AIC we can begin to do things differently and we can begin to do things better. And I think that for us to to limit our discussions of American Islam to simply the African-American African -American community. Of course, we understand and now know that, uh, that many of the, the Muslims who were, many of the slaves who were brought here forcibly in captivity, that they brought Islam to these shores, you know, long before any of the, uh, the other immigrants came to, to bring Islam to, to North America. And, uh, and so, but to, to, I guess, to reduce this, incredible uh, mosaic and, and also I, I would say a, a marketplace for argument and discussion and, and, and uh, uh, compromise and, uh, and, and competition, Th this marketplace that exists within North America, within you know, the marketplace of ideas more generally, but also the marketplace of ideas within the Muslim community. For us to reduce all of that to just this or that ethnic community would be, uh, would be, uh, you know, artificial and and uh, ultimately unfaithful to the complex reality that is American Islam. And so, so I, I, you know, I would look not not having done my own doctoral work in Indigenous studies. This is something that I should be uh, I should be thinking about how we can better integrate uh, the Indigenous communities and their spiritual legacies and their histories. With uh, with our our discussions of our larger discussions of of religion, the role of religion in society, and also the way we approach religion more generally academically here, and the way we approach it in the case of Islam. Well, you know, one of the things as you were talking, I have to remember that half of you is Canadian, in many respects, because you keep saying indigenous, like we're one of those uh, communities is getting ready to be erased off the planet. But I know that you don't mean indigenous in that way. Not in that sense, no, no. 
But I remember uh, I was giving some lectures in Alaska and meeting the Inuit Muslim community that lived around Anchorage. Wow. And I was, I mean, fascinating community um, who, of course, began with uh, veterans uh, who stayed behind and married indigenous women and bringing over indigenous men. But one of the things is that every culture mm -hmm. owns its Islamic story. Yeah. To make ours so fractured that someone else can come to own what, uh, especially African-American and white American Muslims can say they own, help shape and help spread could be problematic. Yeah, it's colonialism. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's not my place to tell you what your Muslim story is. Yeah. And it's not, it's not my place to, you know, it, it's my place to, um, to, to listen, right? It's my, it's my place. Certainly I have my own Islamic story and it's as idiosyncratic as, as anyone else's. But, uh, but, you know, I, I think that we, in, in order, I think the academic community, we, we have to understand that many of the ways in which we operate in academia are, are expressions of colonialism. Yeah. And, uh, and with, with all of this authority that comes with academic expertise and all of the, you know, condescension to non-academics and all, all of this. And so, so I think that, that uh, one of, the, one of the, the ways in which spirituality and our faith can help us better function as as academics is by giving us that epistemological humility that 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 understanding you know that that we are all seekers of knowledge here and 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 there are many branches of knowledge and many aspects of knowledge that i i currently can't even conceive of and so so the need to listen is one of the one of the scholarly virtues that we need to reclaim i think as we as we i think you're absolutely Right, and I see it in two different tracks. One is, you know, uh, the colonialists have conveniently categorized Islam as, oh, they're Sunni, they're Shi, and they're Sufi. Of course, because that's convenient for them, and then you can fit everything in a little box. The fluidity, however, between communities which identify as such is enormous. Yeah. You know, and many uh, are finding that Sufism is more of a lived Islamic spirit, you know, a heartfelt spiritual kind of journey. Yeah. Whereas the others are more performative. The emphasis is on, you know, you got to do this this way and you got to do that. And in some of the Tariqas, that is present also, but it doesn't outbid the lived experience that the pandemic brought. It forced people to go to their interior. That's right. That's right. And, and I, I think also it would be uh, wrong for us to assume that uh, that outside of Sufism, there is no spirituality in Islam. Oh, this there? Right. You know, and so, and so, you know, I, I was, I remember in graduate school when I was translating some of the creeds attributed to Ahmed ibn Hanbal, and mm -hmm. I was, and, and I had come to know him as being a kind of anti-intellectualist and, you know, and a muhaddith and all these things. But then when I read these creeds, they were dripping with real spiritual experience. And I realized that while he never would have self-identified as a, as a Sufi, right, he was a deeply, deeply spiritual being, you know, with depths that I, I could only begin to, to guess at as I was, as I was translating those creeds. And, so I, I, you know, I absolutely agree that, you know, these categories ultimately have to fall away because uh, they, are, they are simply ways of talking about Islam that ultimately pale in comparison to the complexities of the lived reality. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to take another quick, 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 short break. This is Professor Amin al Dean, and I am having a wonderful conversation with Professor Timothy Giannotti, who's the president of American Islamic College. We're on Muslim Network TV and Critical Talk. We'll be right back.
Assalamu alaikum. I love Adam's world because it makes me learn in a fun way. That Adam has green, a green face and um, orange hair. I like this song. I like how Adam sings. No. No. And here's Adam and here's Anissa. Adam is and his sister. And Adam is a boy and he is very small. Download the new Adam's World app at adamsworldapp.com and let's help tomorrow's Muslims today. This is Professor Amin al Dean talking with Professor Timothy Giannotti, who is the president of American Islamic College. We're on Muslim Network TV and Critical Talk. I wanted, um, when I think one step that has been made that is critical, and I've enjoyed them when I've gotten a chance to listen, is a series of webinars or seminars or symposiums, whatever it is you're calling them, which bring to fore all kinds of very interesting issues. Mm. Um, and I would uh, say to the audience, get on their list. Uh, it's, it's conversations with speakers. Sometimes it's listening to learn something you didn't know anything about, but all of it is good and I'm not sure how often, maybe once a month, I'm not sure, how often they occur, but they are well worth listening to and getting in the conversation because you can participate. No, thank you. Yeah, it's, you know, um, as, as you know, the American Islamic College has had its, its ups and downs, right? And, wow. and uh, but I would say in this moment of rebirth, we have really, fully reclaimed and revived the founding vision of Dr. Ismail al-Faruqi, you know, may, may God's mercy be upon him. Um, and, uh, and, and we are really truly aspiring to become an intellectual hub and home for, uh, for mm -hmm. a radically diverse community of Muslims in America and even beyond, right? And so, so the idea of generating discussion and and highlight you know showcasing uh, ideas and fresh perspectives is certainly something that we're you know we're very committed to and so uh, i think the next conversation that's coming up is a panel on gendered islamophobia that uh, that dr shabana mir one of our professors is participating in and and uh and some other wonderful scholars and so so i i just uh you know i i have to say that i i can't take full responsibility for all of this incredible programming. We have some Good. remarkably talented and visionary people on our team here at AIC, and um, and and I just I just feel very blessed. We we have the potential here, I think, to do something truly historic. And even though I understand it's going to take time for the Chicago community and for the national community and maybe even the international community to really become confident in us again. I think that we are already showing the world that something very exciting is happening here at AIC. Yes, and I, I hope this program goes a long way to augmenting that. Um, and maybe uh, we can figure out a way to collaborate in other than yep. um, an interview. Now, American Islamic College, one of its um, pressure points, areas of concern is where it's located and the absence of transportation, this, that, and the other. So I know for a fact that you're looking for other sites and all of that got like railroaded when COVID came. Right. Where are we? So, uh, so we're, we're kind of in a, in a place now where we have strategically decided that 
the the college in order for the college to to truly grow and expand and to really realize its dream of becoming more than just a little uh, a little college that only does arabic and islamic studies um, and islamic chaplaincy studies but for us to to realize this larger dream that continues to value those things but seeks to do much much more uh, for the muslim community and also for the for the for the nation as a whole in order for us to realize that dream, we, uh, we probably should strategically let go of our current location, let go of our current campus, and think very seriously about developing, buying, building uh, a new campus that would be more accessible to all the diverse Muslim groups that exist within the city of Chicago. But also, I, I think it would give us a chance to kind of re- um, uh, I guess recalibrate right. uh, our own uh, financial uh, sustainability right. and think strategically about what where we need to go and what we need to be in the next 10, 20, 30 years. And so part of that discussion, and this is something I don't talk widely about, but part of that discussion includes the the possibility of opening up branch campuses in Detroit and uh, in, in other places. And so is, these, these are, these are discussions that are happening. Also collaborations, there, there may be academic mergers in, in our future with regard to absorbing other programs. And as we begin to diversify into different programs and then different colleges and, and, uh, and, and possibly even a, a name change as we switch from college to university. But, uh, but as, we, as we do so, we, uh, I think we've, we've accepted the idea that uh, letting go of our current campus strategically makes sense because the college cannot be equated with with a building right and right. So, so even though historically we've been located here right on the lake in a kind of a quiet a little bit sleepy uh uh neighborhood of of, yeah. of the near north side in chicago and it's lovely and it's it's you know it's safe it's lovely it's it, it's a beautiful old historic building Mm. And, and it has lots of room to grow, but it, but it doesn't have the same kind of pulse of the of the American Muslim community that that we might have if we were in another location in Toronto. So so we're now looking at the possibility of maybe a, a temporary two to five year relocation uh, where we would lease space as we then think about our master plan of where we should be, where we want to be. Um, but all of that is in process. Of course, COVID has slowed everything down. And I never realized that the selling of a property in the city of Chicago was so extremely complicated and political. Yeah. And so those, those steps, the community meetings and all of the steps that have to, have to be taken, those have all been slowed down dramatically right. by the pandemic. And so, so for now, we are, uh, you know, we are, I guess like on pilgrimage, you know, we're just kind of, <laughs> we are where we are. La beik, Allahumma la beik. I'm here, God, I'm here. Yeah. We're here and uh, and we're in this old building. You can see some of the old relics of this building, that paneling behind me. So we're here in this lovely old building, but we understand that, that you know, that our future is probably not here. Our destiny is going to, is going to lift us and take us somewhere else. But, but for the time being, you know, we, We'll, we'll be where we are, we'll utilize our space as best we can. And, uh, and hopefully after the pandemic, we'll, uh, or as the pandemic comes to a close and we're able to gather again, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make use of this space again to gather and to bring, to bring you know, diverse Muslims from all across the city together for, uh, for enriching programming, for intellectual conversation, um, and maybe even for some for some spiritual programming that I I miss having been uh, taken away from my uh, my work up in Toronto. Maybe some of that community some of that community work will revive down here in in Chicago. Inshallah. Well, well we need it. I want to veer off into um, into religious dialogue for a moment. Mm -hmm. Catholic Theological Union had a program that my husband and I attended, uh, I think it was every three months, every four months, called In Good Faith. Mm, yeah. And then the man uh, that ran the program, Scott Alexander, 
Uh, I don't think he's at American Theological uh, Union anymore. I'm not he's, sure. Hmm. Yeah, he's still at CTU at Catholic Theological Union. Yeah, he's still no, there, but he's he's taken on a new new responsibility. Oh, right? so, okay. right. uh, because I looked at a flyer that came out, and it was a new person in charge of that. But that meeting was for many of us, some on the board also of American Islamic College, a wonderful gathering of Christian yeah. Muslims and Jews. Yeah. But one of the things I noticed was we're not talking to Shia Muslims. We're not talking to evangelical Christians. And many of those people are in the political space to have something to say about us. Yeah. How can we think about mending that? Well, uh, again, I mean, this this uh, this has a lot to do, I think, or or the question itself takes us back to this notion of radical inclusivity that we that we seek to practice here at at AIC, and so and not just the the Shia community, but of course there are different branches within the Shia community, right? We have the Ismaili Muslims, right. the Ashari Muslims, right. and then and nobody's talking about the Nation of Islam. Right. You know, the city of Chicago has one of the largest and, and oldest nation communities. Right. You know, and so so why are we not why are we not speaking to our brothers and sisters in the nation of Islam? And uh, and for the, and even this this last uh, Savior's Day a few weeks ago, you may have noticed from the email. But it was the first time anyone at American Islamic College gave salam to the nation of Islam community on the occasion of Savior's Day. And I thought it was very no, important. That's the current faculty and administrators. The rest of us have always. Yeah. Well, I'm with you. I, yeah. I'm with you. But, but I, I think that we have a lot of work to do if we are going in humility, if we are going to truly engage all of the, you know, the wondrous diversity that exists right. within this city and within our ummah, within the Muslim community. Right. And so, so sometimes it's easier for you know a sheikh and an, and a rabbi to eat falafel together and hold each other and marvel at one another's beards. It's uh, it's easy for that <laughs> to happen, but it's hard for us to have those conversations within our own community. You know those discussions about gender, those discussions about about denominational differences, theological differences. But if if we're truly going to going to aspire to be an intellectual community that that uh, that sees difference as richness, as as uh, moments to be to to educate one another and to be educated. We we need to be more courageous. And so I, I would say that this this chapter at American Islamic College is a chapter in which I um, I uh, I aspire, let's say, to be more courageous than we've been in the past. And uh, and that means hiring diverse faculty members. That means that means represent seeking to represent in our administration and in our faculty the wondrous diversity that exists within our community and within within our world. And so um, and so uh, uh, you you may have read some of our recent job descriptions as we as, as we're searching for positions, but those job descriptions were really worded with that inclusivity. At, at heart, right? I didn't see the job description. You know, I'll, I'll send those. I'll send those to you. But, but I, I, I totally agree with you, and I, I think that there's so much work that needs to be done. And for us, for us to do this right, will mean for us to truly aspire to serve not just one particular brand of Islam or one particular kind of person, mm -hmm. serve the the community in all of its diversity and and the nation as a whole and. One of the great things about being in Chicago is that this is, in terms of, of the Muslim communities, this is the most religiously diverse uh, city in America when it comes to Muslims. And, and we haven't even begun. You know, you're so right there. When I was teaching a course on uh, Islam in America, uh, I took students down to meet some of the Chinese American Muslims uh, in yeah. Chinatown. And yeah. they all, you know, and I'm saying we're here, but if you only focus on but a few 
and people tend to want to focus on their own ethnic community, we wind up with a problem. But on your screen, you can see we have a question. What can the average person do to support AIC's goals and mission? Oh, that's a beautiful question. Yeah. We, need, we, need, we need your support. You know, we, we're aspiring to do something historic. You know, when, when, when many of these great Catholic universities came into being, Notre Dame, Georgetown, you know, it was not a, it was not a, a let's say, a lofty thing or, or an esteemed thing to be Catholic in America. Right. We, we think of the, you know, the historic black colleges in America as well. Education is about empowerment. Right. It's about empowerment. And, and the Muslim community needs not, not just seminaries and schools that serve a particular brand of Islam or a particular orientation within Islam, but we need the rise of great institutions that everyone will be proud of and that everyone will hold in high regard because these institutions lift the community and bring dignity to the community and help us to become more than we are. And so we're really trying to do something historic, but we need, we need, we need, uh, we need input. I need community partners. I need ideas. I need the world. I need the society. I need, I need the, the Muslim community in, in Chicago and, and beyond. I need you to dream with me. I need us to dream together about what we need. What do we need? Do we need just a, another Yale or not to diminish Yale? Yale is a marvelous institution not to diminish any of these other institutions, but do we need to replicate what we already know or do we need to bring into being a kind of university that is doing something different and doing something that is relevant and beneficial to the, to the wider community as well as of course upholding academic rigor and, and training, training minds and, and hopefully liberating lives through that transition. It might be helpful if you thought about one continuing online learning because yeah. that would get more people in but then number two strategically having community sound post meetings yes you know where the community with all the ideas that they can think of could c come together in a you know in a way and talk about what would make me send my kid here what would we come as a uh, uh, continuing adult learner. That's right. I, I, I love that. You may have noticed that we do have from time to time these open coffee hours that I that I host. And when anyone anybody can zoom in and be part of that, and anybody and these are these are not uh, these are totally unscripted moments where we talk and we engage and we and we we do. What is the next one? And maybe the person who wrote that question can make sure that they are there. When is the next one? Or do you have one planned already? I, I don't I don't have one scheduled right now, but I will make sure that you are aware and that so that you can announce it on your show. Uh, because it, to me, th this is very important. It's very important that we remain rooted mm -hmm. in the community and that we work with community partners mm -hmm. and that we don't become an ivory tower, but we are integrated in the the you know the the trenches of of life and we remain relevant socially relevant to all that's going on in our society and in our world um and uh, and of course you know we 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 need uh we need financial support building a university is not cheap and you 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 well know that it's not just the bricks and mortar of the buildings but it's it's the salaries and the support staff and and the accreditation you know the the, just the fees to uh, to, oh, yeah. to journey uh, into accreditation and to remain accredited, those those fees are, are very, very high. But I need more than just money. I need the community to come and to stand with me and to dream with me and to be part, uh, to be an engaged part of this community. And I can I can only promise that that we are right now, our minds and our hearts are are really open. Because we want, we want to be relevant. We want to be beneficial. We want, we want to be bringing forth knowledge that gives benefit. And we also want to be honest about the fact that we're still learning too. So there's a lot that we need to learn. There's a lot of listening we need to do to our community and to our moment in history. And, uh, and there, there's just, there's a tremendous amount uh, that, that we need to do. And, we're, and we cannot do it 
without the community. We cannot do it without the community That's support. True. And we cannot do it without the partnerships, the partnerships that we are going to need uh, in order to truly help our students and to, to emerge as visionary leaders who will have an impact as opposed to just classically trained scholars like you and me who, uh, you know, who, who know how to decipher medieval texts, but <laughs> people, people may not find any other use or much use in what we can offer. Yeah, well, I think I, 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 you've given a, a really broad answer. Let me drill down. Ramadan is coming. Yes. Uh, Muslim Network TV, just like the American Islamic College, needs for the community to come together to support visions. Yes. You know, I know people are worn out. I got COVID brain myself. But I know people are worn out. And we're trying to figure out how to give some spiritual uplift. So maybe what I'll do during uh, Ramadan is have you and some of the other faculty on and let's talk, just talk about spiritually how we're feeling. What can we do? I mean, I've thickered more during the pandemic than I've ever thickered in my life. Yeah. And all of it has been good. (laughs) I wish I had discovered it earlier. Um, But I think that the the vision, which is one of the reasons why we have Muslim Network TV, is we need to have our own, our perspective on things. But and to recognize the forces allied against us. But, you know, as the Quran says, you know, let them come. But as long as our house is in order, they can't start to dismantle it. But we can't do that unless we do what you just said, which is the community has to show up. You can't talk about what American Islamic College is not unless you know what it is. That's right. That's right. And, and you know, the, I think that we, we forget, right, that Harvard started with like nine students and a couple of ministers. And we forgot that Notre Dame started with a couple of French priests and a few, you know, Catholic students. Right. We, and, and we see these grand, these grand uh, buildings and these grand campuses the now. Yeah. And, and, we, and we, we, see, we see the birth of something here at American Islamic College. We see the birth of something that is truly every bit as historic as any of those other institutions. Exactly. But because, because it's small and because, because it's right now vision heavy as opposed to campus heavy, Right. You know, we, we'd feel like, you know, maybe I won't give my estate to it or maybe I won't contribute it to it. But we but we missed the point. And that is you know, the point is, you know, Islamic history is not just about the past. I mean, I was taught that it was and you were, too. Uh, yeah. Islamic, Islamic history is what we do now. Right. We are we are writing Islamic history now. And and while Muslims are, I, I think that we we are are very good about fixing the roof of the masjid of the mosque or we're very good about building a new a new mosque project but to truly lay the foundations of a of a historic new university that would be a blessing not just to the ummah but to the entire nation right mm-hmm. maybe even to the world as international students come to study you know that that this somehow the dream seems too high too lofty too distant but the fact is is that this is the way historic institutions are brought into being. No, and- you're absolutely, you're so absolutely right. And I was thinking about even DePaul, where I was for a thousand years. And what a beautiful started, campus. What wow. a little bitty place, male only students. Mm. And I think, you know, Muslim students will go to Texas Christian, they'll even go to Bob Jones. They'll go to colleges who are overtly and conspicuously Christian yeah. and then feel out of place, like the one college uh, here uh, in s- suburban Chicago um, who fired a teacher for even trying to show some sympathy with mm-hmm. Muslim women wearing scarves. You know, you have all these um, instances and say, but what is keeping them away from, and this is my last question, how does 
a place that's old and historic, I know the place is going to struggle with all of the needs of modern technology, but it also needs to have uh, ethics look at what all of those things are going. That's to right. Do. That's right. How are you going to make the switch? Yeah, and, and, and we need to be asking the, you know, the critical questions. Even as we use technology, we need to be asking the, the critical questions. You know, and one of the critical, I, you know, I'm not, again, I, I'm, I'm old, you know, I'm, I'm old and a bit of a dinosaur. And so I, I was, you know, you know, probably the last person I know who got into email and, and all <laughs> this. Is. No, I was. Well, yeah, so all of this online education is new to me too. Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I, I remember a conversation I had with an Uber driver here in Chicago once, and he was studying at another university, a non-religious non university was doing online studies mm -hmm. and uh, and I was asked he said it's so convenient because I'm driving and I'm able to work and I'm able to study mm -hmm. but I asked him I said so so have you been able to get to know any of your professors and it was no have you been able to get to know any of your any of your fellow students really no 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 uh, and so so he was telling me that his 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 academic program his university education was informative but in no way was it transformative there you go. And so and so I'm all about the transfer the transformative nature of real education. And so part of our challenge it has to be how even in this in this era of Zoom learning, how can we keep this relational and transformative so that we we are having a real experience, a real relational give and take experience in in this process of education. And, and how do we do that? And how do we do that in a way that, that is enriching to the teachers, enriching to the students, enriching between the students? How, how do we do that? And so this is a critical question. And so I, I look forward to returning to face-to-face -face education. And I hope and pray that we'll be able to do that in the fall. Yeah. But, uh, but I know that there will now, I think we will never fully go back. So there will always now be an online component. But with that online component, we need to find a way to make it transformational and not just informational. Well, it might be that you have to to come up with some new courses. You can get a bevy of teachers who are, you know, willing to teach online. But that was such a thoughtful and insightful ending. I'm going to let that be the ending right. and beg and plead that we bring you back during Ramadan. I want to do a kind of round table. Let's I do think it. that is always uplifting. So yeah. I will keep in touch with you about it. And I want to thank Professor Timothy Giannotti. Thank you. Who is the president of American Islamic College for his insightful remarks and bringing all of us up to date here at Muslim Network TV. This is Professor Amina al and I will see you later. Okay, salam alaikum. Alaikum salam.